All right, we have the Latrax Teton out. This truck's actually, I mean, it's no faster than any other 18th scale. They all pretty much have the same motor, so it really isn't any faster than anything else. Now, I was driving this with a two-cell rifle just to make sure that it would hold up. I was a little concerned because the book, you know, didn't mention that a LiPo battery uh, was compatible with it, but uh, it does actually have a LiPo cutoff, just the same as a new XL5. And the speed control didn't get hardly warm at all. The motor got pretty warm, but that's to be expected. Speed control, though, held up great. One thing about these lightweight little uh, 18th scales, they, they tend to, you know, they're so light that in rough terrain they just bounce all over the place. I mean, it's kind of hard to keep them in a straight line. They, they're just a, kind of a handful in this rough terrain. But that can be pretty fun. Uh, it adds to the enjoyment level, and, and that's why a lot of people like these little, little trucks. thing handles really well in the air. As I was jumping it, it for an 18th scale, it uh, you know it, it flew pretty well. I mean, it, it reacts quickly to throttle input, so you have to be kind of careful when you're you know if you're airborne and you're hitting the brakes or that kind of thing, it can flip over real easy. So you got to just be careful with that. The other thing I, I really liked about this Bronco body is when I if I flipped it. A lot of times it would just flip back over on its wheels, you know, and, and you could keep going. You see that several times throughout the video that it just keeps on going. Not right there, though. It's definitely not a crawler. It, uh, yeah, there we go. We got over it. I was trying. I, I wanted to see if it would hop over that rock, and it did. You know, the, the shocks actually did a pretty good job of absorbing the bumps, and, uh, you know, for as light as this is, it, it stayed pretty stable, all things considered. I was being pretty hard on it, running it in a lot of really rough areas. Uh, trying to be as abusive as possible to it, really, and we we did in fact end up breaking it. And I'll, I'll show you where. And then uh, we we yeah we lost the motor uh, also. The motor didn't hold up too long once we got in the puddle, bouncing off the backside of that now, doing some flips and whatever. We're coming up on the brake right here. We, we broke a shock shaft. Right there, just snap that left front shock shaft. You can see it in the video. And you can see it's kind of broken. The, the car's kind of hurt now. It's having trouble climbing the hill. But I figured, well, we'll just keep going. It can still drive, so beat on it some more. See what else happens. Now we get in the mud puddle. This is where the motor really, I mean, the electronics held up fine, but the motor just gave out right there it just quit that was not enjoyable i had to walk out there and get that i thought about leaving it actually just thought well we'll just leave it i don't want to get muddy but it's worth it we picked it up i got it running again but i was having trouble it, the motor would stop and i'd have to you know rake on the radio back and forth and it start working again for a second they quit again and work again it was kind of a pain It did better in the mud than 
than I expected uh, because it doesn't have a lot of ground clearance. It's not very heavy. The tires aren't very big. It is four-wheel drive, but, um, you know, the, the reality of it is if you're going to be going through a bunch of crap like this, uh, I'd get a bigger vehicle. It, this does it, but this, it, it costs the motor running through this puddle. It, it sucked in enough garbage that that little teeny motor it just didn't hold up. It, it quit working. There it went. Try as I might, I just couldn't get it working again. The motor had just completely given up. So that's going to be all she wrote for this one. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.